There's no <laughs> other excuse for a human to be this pathetic. <laughs> you go camping all the time. No, if you've had Lyme disease, sometimes the shit persists for 20 years. You've had it? I've had it for, I had it, had it for over 20 years. I had it when I was a child. Then that means that that's probably what it is. That's probably why you're so, always so sleepy and like running on fumes and tie tie. No, it probably has to do with traveling for three weeks straight. No, I travel all the time, and I've you you rack up more complaints in a week than I do in a year. Dude, I did Uber Eats a thermometer today, <laughs> <laughs> and the thermometer said I was not sick, but I sure as hell felt sick. You, could you be another type of sick? I think it's just I think I had COVID and I think it's just like lingering. Sounds like it's up your nose, the sickness. And is do I sound bad? Oh yeah. It's it just nasally. You sound like Tommy Smokes says normally. Yeah, I do have a rather nasally voice. Yeah. It's part it's, of my Jewishness. I like it though. My pretend Jewishness. Yeah. You're more Muslim than anything. Yeah, I do. I've been getting that a lot lately. Salam alaikum, brother. Alu Akbar. <laughs> yeah, a lot of like bar indeed. Yeah, let's start. Oh, are we not already roughing? Yeah, it's all getting gut. It's all getting gut. It's all getting gut. <laughs> I made fun of Sass. That does not make episode. <laughs> you can't talk down on Sass in episode. Um, yeah. Welcome to the show, Tommy Smokes. What's up? <laughs> Recurring guest. How many times have you been on the show before? You should know. It's that. Probably like it's four or five. Probably. I might be your most frequent guest. Yeah, that sucks for us. Yeah, well, we make magic together. I'm just kidding. I don't know why I'm being hostile <laughs> towards you. I fucking love you, Tommy. I don't know why I'm, I have any type of hostility. Yeah, you towards walked you. in with a little bit of hostility because <clears throat> I'm an easy target. Yeah, and you're okay with it. You just make it fun for everybody to to crack jokes on you. Yeah, that's because I have a thick skin, and those who come at me are insecure. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, <laughs> your smile looks different. Have you been having Invisalign or some shit? <laughs> I've been using actually Crest White Strips, yeah. Really? Yeah, I just actually finished my treatment yesterday. They hurt your gums? Uh, so I, I yeah, the, I, the, I was feeling real bad teeth sensitivity, but I had also had dental work done, so um, I'm not sure which it was. But Tell me, what disease do you have? Crohn's? What the fuck does that mean? Did you have some sort of immune, <laughs> autoimmune, <laughs> AIDS type thing? <laughs> I just look uh, like I do. No, or it's like rainoids. Compromised or some shit. Or I mean, I have acid reflux. That might be what you're thinking of. I'm definitely no. not immune compromised. Who's immune compromised? I thought you were immune compromised. No, that Robbie? would be news to me. Robbie is? He has rainoids. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. I have rainoids. Is that contagious? No, but Kate <laughs> has it too. But it's like you just get cold all the time. Oh, I'm, not, I'm hot as fuck. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Sweating my ass off. Always. We love you, bro. Waking up just gliding through the sheets. <laughs> it's so gross. And no, I haven't been sweating at night. Yeah? Which is nice. So maybe you're not sick? Dude, it's just waking up. The whole body is in pain. Just rolling around in bed. I mean, I also didn't sleep at all last night. I went to bed at like 2.30, woke up at like 7. How long have you been feeling this way? Two weeks. Whenever yeah. I hear someone sick, I wonder if they could get me sick and how sick I would be. I don't think if I'm, I, got I, I doubt I'm contagious. Do you think that you have a higher threshold than Sass? I mean, I don't think I have a higher threshold than most people, but it seems like maybe Sass. But maybe yeah. Sass is the one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I felt fine. I felt fine all, like, I felt better last week, and then I went to San Francisco, felt okay, and then the flight back really broke me down. You're just in tune with your body. Yeah. You know what I mean? Probably. You're just You're just locked in. Do you think that complaining makes you feel better? It does. Does it? It makes me feel like people understand what I'm going through. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Unload that shit then, bro. I can listen. If there's a means to the complaining, or if there's like an end to the complaining, I'm here for it. There's never an end. But there are like an end. something new to complain about. You know what I mean? An end's no, like I a, love to complain. Yeah. yeah. You are a big ass complainer. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Why not? Yeah. I need some bring fucking... Pe- bring other people down with you. Let's, let's, talk, you... About, uh, let's talk about your work, Ron. Let's talk about the Writers Guild. <laughs> we're on strike actually i shouldn't even be talking to you guys uh, yeah what do you uh have you gotten any like emails or anything that you can i've been us? getting tons of emails what are they saying they're just like vote on this and i'm just ignoring it oh dude you gotta you gotta be a part of the guild but why That's, that could be all you have one day the guild yeah but yeah. nothing i do is written they'll take care of your children i just when you're go old. Off, off the top bro there's no writers go for freestyle battlers you're not a freestyle battler <laughs> <laughs> Harry Mack's not in the guild. I'm not in the guild, bro. You're Take in the whatever guild. You, 
That's what. Are I'll you did. in the SAG as well? We were we were talking about that. No, I'm not in this in the SAG. I'll see what the emails say. Is this from your your James Corden inv- venture? Yeah, to to write for a show, you like have to be in the Writers Guild. What is it? WGA. I wouldn't know about that, Tommy. Would you? No, I I, I want to. I'm in the guild too. <laughs> You're not in the guild. Ron is a plus one. Oh shit! There's a, there's I heard a, he was going to take me though. Bro, there's a picket line at Peacock, <laughs> and they're they're inviting me. I have to RSVP if I'm if I want to be part of today's picket, which it, it starts at one thirty. Is that in New York? Yeah, at the fucking Peacock building <laughs> at Peacock New Front. There's a Peacock building in New York. It's gonna be pouring rain all day. <laughs> yeah, just like NBC. How bad do they really want to hold that line? Four one five Fifth Avenue between thirty seventh and thirty eighth. We're picketing. It's pretty close. Or we could break the picket line and walk in and like <laughs> write for SNL this week. Yeah, yeah. 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 Get some credits. Dude, yeah, this is a good opportunity to start just being like, yeah, I'll write on your fucking shows. Yeah. Or then or then once the strike ends, everybody will hate you and you'll never get work. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what would happen. I don't I want to do whatever makes... would make the most people like me. Having having I don't think you can be like the one dude on SNL who's like, guys, this opportunity is so crazy. Let's just write for free. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean like us, like people who aren't in the guild. No, they're could definitely they be, not just letting we... strangers in the building to write sketches. <laughs> <laughs> non-union. <be> funny. <laughs> Sometimes you need a non-union guy to like build like your fucking bathroom or something like that. It can be a little bit cheaper. Yeah, that is true. Everybody uses non-union. The NFL had guys cross the picket line and <laughs> I mean, the football sucked, but it was fucking. It was a football strike. Like a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, how long ago? In like the 70s or some shit like that? There was a strike Four at the Hannaford's time. in my hometown. What kind of strike? Grocery store strike. <laughs> like striking should be special, for the special needs cat kids running the counter <laughs> weren't getting paid enough. <laughs> we want two chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> <laughs> bag your own bags. It's like, okay. <laughs> That's super easy. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, those get why well, yeah it is a good job if you have special needs a great job yeah there was always a lot of special needs dudes working at that store it's not that that store i think it's all grocery stores yeah i think they gravitate in that direction it's good I, work i think it's just a little bit indulgent for fucking writers to think that they're in some kind of like union like they're coal miners like yeah it's that, like they think that they're like fucking this blue collar like respect unions like they're not really getting like they're, they're not in these like deathly conditions that like mm. i don't know right right snl snl is pretty bad i've heard like not like obviously it's like, better it's, than the coal mines. it's awesome well yeah but i think the hours <laughs> the hours are pretty insane in snl it's like a lot of like 24 hour days but it's also to like paid, you're to you're, get paid what they're getting paid like a couple hundred bucks an episode or some shit. But you're flipping a fucking tough product, and then like people are getting launched into careers of being like millionaires. I don't know the writers like, though. Like if you want to work I somewhere guess John desirable, was a writer. yeah. If you want to work somewhere desirable, like it's going to be it. Like you'll be rewarded in the long run, or I don't fucking know. Maybe we should unionize in here. I guess. Sounding like a real scab right now. Yeah, you're sounding like a scab. You should clip this. A bootlicker. Writers Guild. Writers Guild uh, member speaks out. Yeah, wants billionaires to make more billions. Yeah, says writers should be getting working for free. It's all about the opportunity. (laughs) Like even the fucking baseline people in the Writers Guild that I was in with were like making good money. They were like, yeah, like nobody was like coming in like poor and shit. I was by far the poorest person in there. Yeah. Like they were going out to fucking lunch every day, buying twenty dollars sweet green salads. Damn, I was in the fucking. I was just making peanut butter and jellies in the little fucking closet, dude. I was fucking bootstrapping it. Yeah, they were the Look fucking bourgeoisie, bro. You're probably like top one percent of the writers guild now. No. Yeah. Definitely not. You rich, rich. Yeah, you're no, dumb, rich. Not, How much bro. do you make? You're dumb, rich. I'm trying to make some money, bro. Let's get, then we should union up then. Let's get a union in here. <laughs> I'm down to fucking put no, our. Dave, if you're watching, I'm not for the union. <laughs> See, now you're the fucking bootlicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I, you're bootlicking. I lick his boots, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just, I would assume. Tyler, can you look up how much SNL writers make? I'd assume it's a very small amount of money. I was making $3,000 a week as a as like a base level, entry level salary well, working on that. Good. Very solid, yeah. Yeah. 57 to 72, average 65. A year? Yeah. It's kind of a very low amount of money to be working on the most famous show of all time. All right. Because anyone will do it. It's livable, it's though. Pitch. Yeah. I made less than that when I first started here. Me too. By a lot. Now it's about like 
probably now 10% now of Now about I'm right in that average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm right around that 62. <laughs> this is the email, the w- W55. <laughs> 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 but fuck, just ha- happy to be out of the 50s for now. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be back. <laughs> um, it said at, at, they sent this shit out at midnight dear members we have not reached an agreement on the stu- with the studios and streamers we will be on strike after the contract expires at midnight your WGA negotiating committee spent la- the last six weeks negotiating with Netflix Amazon Apple Disney Discover Warner NBC Universal Paramount bro how are you going to make a deal with all of these fucking I'm sure they all have like one representative to work on this. So they have like a Chris Paul. Like remember Chris Paul was the NBA player guy? Yeah, union chief. They have yeah. a chief negotiator yeah. and uh, like a committee of writers. It's probably Gladwell. <laughs> yeah, it has to be. Oh, it's definitely Malcolm. Guild members demonstrated collective resolve and supported and support of the agenda with a 97.85 strike authorization. Wow. I'm squarely in the 2.15 percent, <laughs> dude. Rep for the 215. We shouldn't have striked. No, swinging a miss. The people need their fucking entertainment. Yeah, we need to swallow our goddamn pride and write for these fucking late night shows. You think Seth Meyers can come up with his own jokes? Uh, I was reading something. Apparently, like when this happened in like 2007, all the late night shows were just like improvised. Yeah, I saw they're gonna like maybe do that again. Yeah. Oh, they'll make Trump jokes on their own? Those yeah. liberal f- swines. <laughs> they said that Conan would just like spin his wedding ring every show. That, uh. was, that was like his fucking, uh, his, his bit every time. And that he paid like 80, 80 staff people out of his pocket. I mean, they all have to be, I'm assuming they all know how to write. They probably I mean, just Colbert, don't didn't to. he used to write on like The Daily Show probably? I don't know if you wrote. Maybe he was just a personality. Correspondent. But they, yeah, they can't be just funny. I mean, they're all from SNL. Yeah, a lot of them. And they all wrote so on was SNL. From the Dana Carvey show. What Not about? Really. I was thinking of Conan. Conan wrote for SNL, right? He's done yeah. that. I and think, the right? Simpsons. Yeah, Conan's Conan's yeah. podcast now. He's doing like yeah. a travel show He's now, grounded. which is like the biggest cop out of all time to do any <laughs> food and travel yeah, who content. Who <laughs> told us about that? Uh, who was talking? Someone about in that? Austin, you were like, tra- they were like, yeah, like Conan's working on a travel show, and you were like, just looked them right in the face, and you were like, travel shows are the lamest oh, thing yeah. of all time. I didn't say lame. I said that they're like the <laughs> biggest like boondoggle. <laughs> it's <laughs> like if you don't want to do real work, you do a food or a travel yeah, show. Yeah. Should we have a little brainstorm meeting for Neighborhood Eat season three? The <laughs> other day they were like, hey, do you want to do three episodes in Florida for Neighborhood Eats? Yeah. I was like, no. <laughs> Do I to, want to do three episodes? Going to Florida, going right to Hawaii. Now. Did they not get the memo? We would have to go in like the summer. Yeah. But also three, like that defeats the purpose yeah. of a boondoggle travel show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that defeats true. the purpose of stretching a fucking regular show into multiple vacations. We no, should do I a kid. show within the within neighborhood eats of just how much money can you spend on on a trip, basically, and try to get it. No, expense. I think that that's an, antithetical to what they're trying to do. I think their point they're, was they're, you're spending too cut. much yeah, money. We're getting cut from we, the from the big thing. Slam on the wrist. No, we are we are not cut. <laughs> you, know, you definitely. I think you're, <laughs> yeah, you were the yeah, first yeah, one they cut. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The they were like Tom. We can't we can't bring Tommy anymore. Oh my god! But the magic, the fucking three. Did they not see the LA Taco? Just extreme. walk into Eric and be like, I think you're going to have to watch all yeah. 17 of these minutes and we say that we're not. Yeah, tell us we're not going back to Neighborhood Eats this season. You think the writer strike was bad? <laughs> yeah. It was always super fun to do. I was n- never even once like passionate about it, though. <laughs> neighborhood Eats? The food? I'm not a foodie. Oh, I was extremely passionate. No, right, it, Tommy's would be, in <laughs> it would be like Rome. Rome would give like a 45-minute fucking explanation of a every great single explanation. texture that he was tasting <laughs> and every single taste spice everything and then i'll be like yeah it's pretty good <laughs> yeah because i would like research the shit beforehand be like what's be it made nothing of else for me to say except i will say we did get i did get the uh that that barbecue video out of uh, neighborhood eats yeah which was an all-time classic dude a year ago we were in uh, waco 
That was Today. fun as hell. They were always fun I got as the, fuck. Uh, the, the but I would be bed. I'd be doing like forty five minutes of research on a place, fucking just so I could have like a ten second sound bite, and you'd be stumbling out of your hotel room with your shirt <laughs> stiff as a board from fucking your seventeen jerk off session, <laughs> dried semen everywhere, you washboard abs. It was fun. If dude. someone shot you, the fucking bullet would fucking shatter the fucking nut on your stomach <laughs> on the outside of your shirt, and it would just crumble to the ground like stained glass. I had a great time. I also had. Enjoyed when yeah. Tommy came. You I, did enjoy I, it? I did not enjoy when you oh. just made me go to that club. That was, LA. I mean, we talked about this. That was, I mean, Mike Wallace dr- dragged us there. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was, was not our fault. That was not yeah, my fault. Yeah, your, your, um, your guys fault. Yeah, I mean, I bought those sunglasses, which I now lost. Yeah, Hollywood Tommy. Hollywood Tommy. I got to play a character. Hawaii Tommy. Oh, my God. I figured, we, we got to go to Hawaii. What if we just what if we just say all the budget towards yeah, one Hawaii? Yeah, what if Hawaii we just do one video? episode? We could or we could do six in Hawaii. Yeah. 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 They probably got like barbecue out in Hawaii. One trip cuz they got barbecue. Fish. Mahi mahi. Sushi. Goddamn pizza. sushi. Uh, pizza. Uh, pizza. Poke yeah. bowls. Hawaiian pizza. Poke, poke bowls. bowls. It's be a different island. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 Yes. And it's a one month long trip. Oh, that would be so <laughs> Should we do that right when I get back from Iceland? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Should, dude. Let's get out. We got to get out there. That wouldn't that realistically though. That would be cheaper then. Yeah, really efficient. Yeah, it would definitely oh, be cheaper. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, Let's I'm sure. It. I'm sure the five thousand dollar flights to Hawaii are going to be a lot cheaper than the fifty dollar flight to Florida. No, but that's like they pay like you twelve to fly different to flights. Yeah, twelve different flights, twelve different trips. So. Yeah, six episodes. Yeah, forget. Hotels. Oh my god, dude, they're trying to. They want us to do it like in New York City. Yeah. We're they want us to do it in the, in the office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They want like us to like try the shit that Vibs brings in for lowering the bar yeah. and get like a different view on it. <laughs> Just our own camera. The Lay's potato the chips set. in the yeah. kitchen. Yeah, that's bullshit. They need to let us fucking go on our... It's a bummer. Because yeah. remember last year, every, they were all like, we were all like, yeah, dude, we're going to fucking Europe. We're going to, <laughs> we're going to Hawaii. Next, But well, they... I mean, someone from the Brandon content team was, they literally told me, they're like, dude, you should just go to Hawaii. You never know how long things like this last. He literally, someone literally a higher up. Told you that? Yeah, who has, I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus. under the bus. No, because in case they still let us know. In case they still let us go. Oh, yeah, it's true. You know what I mean? I don't want them to be like, hey, you're the one who's approving Hawaii. I want to get to Hawaii. And then then be like, where the fuck are they? Yeah. Like the the editor in Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I want him to be like slamming the JK phone down. Like, Hawaii. Yes. You went to Hawaii. Is Hawaii like expensive as hell? Uh, and be real. I mean, yeah, be, be real. real. If you're staying at the White Lotus Hotel, yeah, it was. So it was. Expensive I mean, it was a you. Four Seasons. <laughs> I was on my honeymoon. Yeah, How much that yeah. shit run you? It's it was. True. It was no expensive. Cap. It was expensive. Why do you get to go to Hawaii? <laughs> you know who's always in Hawaii is Danny Jackal. Why is she in Hawaii is every she other? Always week? in Hawaii. She's always posting like back to Hawaii. No, it's like uh, L.A. people treat that like going to Florida on these Oh, places. really? Yeah. Really? It just costs $70,000. How much did it cost? Yeah. 50 For what? 60 Honeymoon. For the whole... No, I didn't spend 50000 uh, Francis probably did on his Africa trip. And you're going on that same trip. I know. Now I'm going <laughs> to... I might go to Africa, too. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm making that fucking Writer's Guild money. You're, you're going about to go to Africa? I, my my, my uh, dad pretty... and my family in Florida really want to go on an African safari. My dad's been like 30 years ago, and he's like, I, I just want to go one more time. I really don't want to. Nothing's planned. It's a couple of years out. Uh, don't years. you want to save some money, dude? Since yeah. you're out of work right I'm now? I'm seriously concerned. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I got an Apple savings account. It's like a fucking 85% yield. Damn. Wait, no, really? No, it's 4%, but it's like, have you got, you haven't seen these new like Apple <laughs> bank <laughs> accounts? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know it wasn't 85%, but I'm looking for I a higher know, yield man, savings not account. Yeah. I get like a dollar a month in Citibank. I get 60 cents a year, I think. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Roth Trust. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going through all my and transactions. <laughs> yeah, when I was, when I was doing my taxes, I was going through all my transactions and I found like interest and it was like less than a dollar for a full year. Apple's doing these new savings accounts that are like a 4% yield. Oh, because sure. like all these banks are crashing because nobody's putting cash in anywhere. And they're like, we need a way to get an influx of cash. So they have these high yield savings accounts that are backed by probably like fucking Morgan Stanley or something. So I think it's legit. But then all these other banks were offering like one day specials on 5% yields. It's a good time to get some yield, boys. Yeah, I've got to get yield. Let's yield. Are you invested at all? i got to start investing. Yeah, oh, a little yeah. invested. What do you got? Pen? No. A lot of pen. God, give, me some, no. give me some real yeah. shit. God no. I bought at one twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I think Donnie, uh, Hold the line. Big Donnie, was like buying as it was. Oh man, he was just. You know, I got, I got some Vanguard. Lot of Vu. 
Some what Apple. do you have, Ron? I'm not, I'm not using any of these like <laughs> fake stocks. The Vanguard is one of the safest investments you can make. Penny on stocks. The I don't buy. Penny. I don't like. I don't like trade on my own. You just have a dude that you give your money to. Yeah. Because I'm not going to be up. like. Pick I'm not going to be like paying in the fuck. I'm not going to be like. Tell him I'd love to break bread with him. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get a. I'm trying to get a woman to do it, bro. They're yeah. the ones who are probably oh, so good at it. So she can spend it all. <laughs> Seriously, no, they're tenacious, dude. The dudes just want to be booling all the time. The dudes just want to fucking hang out and like talk about bar stool. Like, whoa, what's <laughs> yeah. Dave like? It's like, dude, I need a woman who knows nothing about bar stool, you so hear I can f- actually talk shop. Want to hear a funny story? I uh, so I the guy that I signed my lease with, my my realtor <laughs> slash broker. Whatever the fuck he did, all he did was buzz me in once, and then I had to pay him a shit ton of money. But he came to my apartment last night to pick up the lease because I had it like print. He, I had like printed out and shit, and he was like away. And he he's like a he claims to be a big fan of comedy, and he was like, I just met the uh, the people that that uh, own the cellar, the comedy cellar, and I was like, oh really? And he was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> uh, I was like. Yeah, that's cool. It's like, you ever go to the comedy cellar? And it's like, it's great. And he's like, oh, yeah, Louis C.K. performs there. <laughs> and then he was like, do you perform there? And I was like, no, no, it's pretty, it's a long process to get into there. And he was like, uh, you want me to recommend you? <laughs> 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 and I was like, absolutely not. I said, I was like, no, 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 no. I do not. I, and he was like, I was like, you need to get recommended by like two comedians and then you have to audition. And he was like, so your realtor can 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 it recommend you? And I was like, no. And he's like, what if they owe me a favor? And I was like, dude, no. I was like, stop this conversation right now. This dude's going to fuck up my entire, entire career. career. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be like Every... putting me on stage so they don't like get fucking sued by my realtor or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a headlining act. We gotta yeah. bump somebody. Yeah. Every real estate agent is the same. I've been viewing a lot of apartments too, and they're all they're all just different variants of each other. Like all these, they're all like youngish, like dressing cool guys, like recommending yeah. you. Dude, this guy, he did not even. Well, I went to tour the apartment. It's like one of those ones where you press a button and it calls the phone number, and you can buzz in from your phone. He was never. I never even met him. Until I until I had to go in person to sign the lease. Until you owed him twenty percent, yeah, of what yeah, you'll pay crazy. the entire and they're, year. They're yeah. content creators now. Real I, estate agents I know, have become I know. content yeah. creators. Yeah. Like bro, do TikTok. they have they're gimbals? Like How are they so smooth? They're like going from room. I know. Yeah, room their transitions hit. Bro. Gliding, bro. It's, it, they do have nice transitions. They they do, but I think that they literally hire other people to do that. Which is the biggest joke of all time. Hundred percent. You could easily just fucking whip through with your phone. Yeah, I don't. I, it's bizarre. I, I viewed an apartment the other day, and uh, the, the tenants were home. And, oh, that's and, the and the kid was like, "Tommy from Barstool." No, and, no, I, no, and no, I was no. like, All right, "Well, I can't live here." I no, he did. Yeah, I swear to God, I was like, "I can't take." It. How old was he? Uh, so that was the other thing. He's like, oh yeah, great for like a college kid. This apartment, they're like 23, 22 or something. I was like, I can't be moving into a college kid Stooley's apartment. Just be buzzing up all the time. I thought you meant the kid like a fucking child. Oh, no, no, no. Like the kid, the two, like the guys. The tennis, the tennis, yeah, the tennis, yeah, yeah. the tennis. I thought it was like parents and a kid. No, 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 no. I toured a college once, and you know how they take you in the dorms? Yeah. They brought us in the dorms, and there was just two kids just like playing video games in there and with like a pack of people on a tour. <laughs> it was so awkward. <laughs> just hitting a gravity ball. Yeah. yeah. Weird as hell. I rem- yeah, I, rem- I think that was, I remember that too. But why don't they, I feel like all the other ones I toured, they just had like an extra dorm. That they just didn't put people in, so they could use it as a touring dorm. Right, just an empty one. Yeah, like they're like a show, a show. There's like ten thousand dorm rooms. They can't just leave one open. Not just a shit box with like cans all over yeah. the floor. Um, where's Tommy about to move to? Tommy, I'd like to get to the village, WV Westville, somewhere around here. <laughs> You're not going to be in Westville, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've aged out of Murray Hill. Yeah, yeah. I, but the thing is, like, I'm not going to go to the gonna, factory anymore. No, I mean, hey, it's a good spot. <laughs> I'm going to get a wor- I'm going to have a worse apartment and pay more money, yeah. which is an unfortunate uh, sacrifice. But I'm getting really nervous. That I'm going to be homeless because I'm up June first. So, if any real estate agents out there, dude, my I, mine took literally three days. Oh, congratulations. It's what do you, I, but I feel like ever, I always hear people having like such a hard time finding an apartment. It's always, I mean, you only have one bedroom, right? Yeah. So, I mean, two bedrooms. Why are you getting two bedrooms? Because I, I have a roommate. Oh, you're still living with your roommate? Yeah. yeah Spider? Yeah. No, or Spider's moving to Chicago. Oh, but your other, other one? roommate is. Is that breaking news? Staying. 
No, uh, I don't think so. Maybe. Broken? Why? Why? Disloyal ass <laughs> spider, bro. Do you like having a roommate? Yeah, I like. I I don't mind having a roommate. I know people are like, oh, you. It's so much better to live alone, but. I like having a built-in friend in my apartment. You know, it's like I I could do my own thing in my room, have my alone time. But don't you have a weird relationship with your roommate? What do you mean? I don't know. I feel like it, when I came over your apartment, he was like he was like there, but you didn't talk to him. I've no, never I've very, never met him, but friends. I've heard like I've been at your apartment or like around. I've like been out and you're always talking about your roommate. Never even don't even know what he looks like. It's a tall guy. Is he he's, real? Does he exist? Yeah, no, he he's seriously, exist. he's a real person. I don't know why anyone would think he's not a real I think real it was person. like a sixth sense situation yeah. where he's like, oh, yeah, he's no, right he's in he's real room. and he's alive. He's real and he's alive. <laughs> yeah, you got to get out of that. You got to get out of that apartment. I feel no. like he's the type of dude that just like sits in a, wood, a wooden chair that doesn't recline at all straight face with his yeah. hands on his Wait back. a minute. You have met him. You met him in Montauk. He was with, he was with that crew. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I couldn't tell which one he was. He was the taller one. There was like four tall guys. Oh, there were three other ones. I was seated. I couldn't really seated. gauge how yeah, tall yeah, they yeah. were. What, was Fair. I going to get up to shake their hands? <laughs> yeah, that's when Rowan was like, heard I was going to Montauk and booked a hotel right next to me. Yeah, I know. I remember when that happened. <laughs> it was bizarre. Yeah. It was, I just wanted to be around Tommy. <laughs> I just yeah. had to be close. We to were Tommy. in our renaissance. <laughs> it was a, a hell of a time. I'm probably going to go back around that same time this year. I'm going back right around that same time, too. Wow. We'll exchange dates later. Damn. You trying to get out to Montauk? Maybe. We stayed at this nice ass hotel. Or I did. Tommy stayed. Yeah, mine was worse. Shitbox. Yeah. Was not, you must nice. make so that. much fucking money. <laughs> no. Let's guess, yeah. let's guess how much money. Yeah. Makes. Dude, are you like a multi millionaire? No. Yeah. I'm not a one millionaire. Oh, you're close though. You're no, there. yeah, you're close. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. you're right there. <laughs> you're right there. Yeah. What are you at nine ninety five? No, <laughs> yeah, just bro. waiting to t- tap into that one million. No, because paycheck. if you don't spend it, they take it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to spend it, or they take it's it. All, you're going. You're staying in the nicest <laughs> hotels everywhere. Well, dude, that's we went the thing to, with the wife we went to too. Moon, dude, we went to when we went to Moon Tower. They had a hotel for Ron, and he just booked his own. He was like, "I'm not staying at that." No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. There was a hotel hotel for me for one night and so i booked my hotel for the other night and i was planning i i only booked it for one night i was planning to go into the hotel that you were staying in the next night and your manager was like oh too good for the hotel like that we booked you i just gave your room to someone else and i was like dude i was going to move into it but i can just extend my stay to alleviate sass and his agents fucking hefty ass fees if anyone's a millionaire (laughs) it's your fucking manager who's fucking oh yeah definitely Chipping off the top. He's I feel the, like you're rolling in it too, though. Now. He is. Hell, yeah. I'm the poorest broke person. Hell. Pull broke out your hell. wallet. No, he is multiple revenue streams. Why are you always talking about my wallet, dude? My wallet is like because you like have a dirty brick wallet. wallet. <laughs> brick watch, brick wallet, bro. This shit is fucking insane, dude. I uh, he he got in with Frankie Borelli opening that bar up, dude. He's just liquid in weird ass <laughs> ways, dude. He's an investor he's out in owner. fucking. Yeah, ghost he's a, investor. A ghost investor out in Long I Beach. Wish. I should. I should have twenty done beers that. on tap. And a fucking I should have fucking done tiny that. pizzas, chicken parm sliders down at Sass's spot. I really, I genuinely don't know how much money I have. What, what do you mean? Because I, I, I haven't paid taxes. I keep a, an Excel doc with all my different money, just so I know how much I have where. How much you have? I don't want to say. If you know, now I'm, say I'm getting my have. feet put to the fire. Yeah, because you're rich. Yeah, no, you're, I'm not. You rich, rich. No, I'm literally not. <laughs> Bro, you're you dumb, rich. rich. You're no, dumb. I'm rich. literally not. I am trying to get a new apartment. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah, you're rich. gonna get a new apartment. Where are you gonna get? You're gonna get Epstein's old place. <laughs> <laughs> you can swing that eighty mil. Sixty five million heated floors. <laughs> dungeons for the little babies. <laughs> yeah, this is my rich boy. <laughs> Me and Tommy might move in together. Really? I don't know. Yeah, right. Put him in the doghouse. <laughs> I could fuck with that. No, I still haven't been invited to Ron's apartment. Neither have I. Actually, I have been. Have you been there? No. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> he won't come. But I did get invited after the case, the third case race. Cool. Yeah, I haven't been invited at all. You, yeah, you you uh, demurred. You, you didn't want to go. No, but I did want to go, but it was too late to go all the way to Brooklyn and come back. You Seriously. were on so much cocaine, bro. You what? Were <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. Oh, you guys what openly talk about that on this? here? So I don't coke do problem? I, oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I do thought that was like an cocaine. off the record thing. That's like the one thing that I pride myself in okay. is that I don't do cocaine. Yeah. 
How do you think he does all those spots at the stand? Why do you think he's so tired all yeah. the time? <laughs> if I would do, if I was on cocaine, I would not be tired. I think I wouldn't know. Never no, done it. it's not like you're on it during the, the middle of the day. If that's the thing, though, if I was on it, I would be on it during the middle of the day. That's how I operate. <laughs> You'd love it. Yeah. <laughs> you love hard. Yeah. You love hard and fast. I've so contemplated. So kind of I've contemplated doing it before, and then I've gone. Nah. It's like I just go. I don't. This is not something that I need to wake up and feel bad about in the morning. You mean feel guilty or feel hungover? Both. Just don't feel guilty. Oh, I would feel guilty. Why? I'd be like calling my mom. I let you down. <laughs> it's that fent that fentanyl shit go crazy. It's like you can't fuck with that fentanyl shit. Yeah, people don't like when you joke about fentanyl. I'm not joking. That's why I don't do cocaine. <laughs> you do cocaine. Well, obviously. I've seen Tommy Dick do cocaine, do a test trip, tested positive for fentanyl, still did it. <laughs> That was that was when we were at the drugs. we were at that prostitute club in LA. I did one off her ass. Yeah, yeah, that a boy. You guys are nasty for going to that, and the fact that the amount that you both think about it is uh, I have not. I literally I only it talk about it. You guys Sass always it have it on your Sass mind. brings it up. All when the, the hell have I? When I the hell do I bring it up? You brought it up just now. You also, brought... don't be telling people that we went to a fucking prostitute club <laughs> because we did we not. did a whole episode <laughs> no, about but, it. Like but we last did not, summer, we did not go to a prostitute club. We walked in and instantly left. <laughs> you, we were literally driving you were the through LA, and Sass said, "Is that a prostitute?" You were getting sweet, sassy, horny. Sassy wants to get his rock. The bouncer, the bouncer was like, the bouncer was like, yeah, it's uh, he's like, think about it, man. I mean, it's three hundred. You're gonna spend three hundred dollars on a date with a girl, and Tommy was like, holy shit, that's a good point. <laughs> Why don't I just buy uh, some just, pussy? Tommy pulled out a calculator, yeah, yeah, punching the numbers. Yeah, Sassy wants to splooge tonight. See if he could swing that three hundred. You boys, are, you boys are bad boys. You're a son of a That's bitch. why they're canceling neighborhood eats. They're like, what yeah. is this $3,000 <laughs> expense? Yeah, uh, exactly. It's fucking Tommy and Mike. That's us. Not me, bro. I was the first. We were to all leave. three of us were in the same situation. I was the first to leave, and you guys. Yeah, were we like, left in the same Uber you guys were at like, the same exact. I don't know. Time. It, it was a fascinating. Uh, it was a Tommy, fascinating. You know Tommy's voice. I don't know. Could be. Could be fun, dude. <laughs> That's not my voice. It's, you just did exactly what I just did. You just did exactly what I just did. I'm sass. I'm a little sass. That's pretty good. No, terrible. Terrible. And I said, guys, let's take a look. Let's take a step back. <laughs> Is this the men we want to be? Is this we want to be? <laughs> Waking up tomorrow covered in STDs. Of course, Tommy already has all the STDs, so he yeah. didn't give up. That didn't, hurt, that didn't hurt him. Dude, I heard a new... STDs <laughs> cover you? Yeah, like oh, yeah. Chicken box. The ones that Tommy has, yeah. True. Full body. Anyway, Ron, how much money do you make? Yeah. I heard a new, I heard a new term for uh, cocaine this past weekend. Uh, in in Rockaway, that someone called it. They're like, "Yeah, I got a square bag." <laughs> Damn, a square bag. Square bag, firefighter. A square bag. Oh God, no. Is it closer to zero or nine hundred thousand? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we were uh, when I was in uh, my old roommate. Did you ever meet my old roommate? Uh, yes. Who had the like T-shirt brand? Yeah. Yeah. He would. He would be like. Yeah, bro, you hitting the slopes tonight? <laughs> and I was like, I would be like, I'd be like, no, there's no, there's no mountains around here. I'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> People love the slopes. Yeah. People love to call it the, the slopes. Yeah. Or to say like, how, what does that smell like? What does that smell like? Oh, I see. <laughs> inhaling it. We need to get like a timer for Oh, I, I get it. I don't know what I've, uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever snorted anything. You probably like Doritos spray, or some shit. Those nasal sprays. Yeah. Like you probably those. did some shit to like show off. In I, the definitely lunch hall. I definitely Cinnamon. did that. I definitely did that. You ever do a neti pot as a kid? Oh no. boy, those were bad. Oh boy. Those but do those work? Because they look like they would. It clean seems like they you work, out. but they're not worth the discomfort. Yeah. And they also, if you don't do it with the right like liquid, doesn't it? Like yeah, you can like kill die. yourself or yeah. something with your brain. Do it with working. alcohol. If kills you do it with water, you'd like die. No, you got to do like yeah, distilled it distilled water distilled or like water. saline. So something. it's not just red tap water will kill you. You can get you can get something like an infection like in your brain. I mean, that's what I have. Just fucking blow your nose, brother. You just probably did a neti pot. I've been neti potting like crazy. But that ear candles are fire. I bet you would fucking pull out a fucking Come on, do a, tell. a creature from these ear candles. Have you done them? I know you did. Like, didn't you do the water one? I've done the water. You, and then you done the candle? Oh, I, I go to the ENT regularly to get that shit cleaned up. 
the ear candles is almost more satisfying. Really? You lay on the side. It's like a gravity bong. You, f- you get a lover to put that put it in your ear and fucking <laughs> light the top of it, have it in there for 10 minutes, and God gravity bongs the fucking wax out of your ear. It just sucks it right out? It pulls it into the bottom of this like candle, and you can unwind it, and it's like half of it's filled up like a frosting Ugh, tube that that's they awesome. use. That's it, awesome. It's so satisfying. I use baby oil in a dropper. The fuck? <laughs> what the hell? That's my auntie recommended. That? But you get a dropper, you pour some baby oil in it, do five drops in each ear a couple times a week, and then you go to get, but to him to get cleaned out pretty regularly. That's my routine. That's my ear cleaning routine. I've never <laughs> done that. I've never like gone to get my ears cleaned. Is that like a normal thing? Uh, yeah. I mean, if you have problems like I do, I have a real sinus. You have issue. a waxy. You have no, a wa- I just have sinus See? issues. You're all diseased up. No, that's a, just a, I have sinus issues. Everybody, everybody. Did you get your ears cleaned issues. twice a week? Is that what twice you said? a year? I said. Oh, oh. Okay. That's still a lot. Well, I mean, I don't want to fucking, I don't have a lover to pour hot wax in my ear. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, why don't you go back to the prostitute porno. club and see if you can hire yeah, one that's of them what I should wax done. your ears up. <laughs> it's like, ooh, what are those? <laughs> so Where do, do I do put these? Put it in my ear. <laughs> yeah. Stick it in my ear now. Light it on fire, stick it in my ear. <laughs> have you ever seen, fuck, who was, what was it? I was just thinking of this. It's extra for that kind of action. Who's the director? Is David Lynch a director? Finch. Hey, let's take a second and stop the Son of a Boy Dad podcast so I can talk to you guys about HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Tommy, can you cook any food? Uh, I can with HelloFresh. But well, good it, news. Yeah, yeah. Without it now. Good news. HelloFresh does more than just delicious dinners. Not only can you take your pick from 40 weekly recipes, but you can choose over 100 items to round out your order. From snacks and easy lunches to desserts, pantry necessities. Everything arrives in one box. Wow, that sounds like a real pantry dropper. Their quick and easy meals make feeding the family a cinch without the high price tag. So it doesn't matter how much cash you're making because that price tag is going to do you right. Their new fast and fresh options are ready in just 15 minutes or less. No more scouring the grocery store looking for that one ingredient to complete your recipe. HelloFresh takes away the hassle by delivering fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients so you have exactly what you need. It helps you cut down on food waste. HelloFresh cares about quality, and that's why their seasonal ingredients are picked at peak ripeness to travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days so you know they're fresh. Mm. Go to HelloFresh.com. Slash Sun 16 and use code Sun 16 Mm. for 16 free meals Mm. plus free shipping. Damn. That's HelloFresh.com slash Sun 16 and use code Sun 16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Now back to the show. David Lynch. Is he the one that I was talking about this with uh, Gardini when I did his podcast and we were watching the video of him when he's like... uh, have you ever seen the episode of Louis where where Louis auditioning for Late Night? Louis is a so. is a molester, uh, <laughs> sex predator, <laughs> pest. So no, damn, bro. He's a, he's a he, he's a showman. He's a showman. <laughs> yeah, he was just he was showing. I have to touching. cut that, bro. <laughs> was that exhibitionist? <laughs> Yeah, what if he hears this? Yeah. He He's listens, never, dude. Sass is never getting to the cellar. He listens to this fucking show. <laughs> Louis C.K. Sass's listens real to estate agent show. is going to be like, can yeah. Sass please get in the cellar? And Louis C.K. is be like, no, he called me a rapist. <laughs> I'm, I'm not partaking in this conversation. I like Louis C.K. I, I defend him. Doesn't it sound like it, bro. Roan was the one who went at him. I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to buy Louis, but I, I, I want to watch his, but I don't know how to buy it. got to buy it on his website. It's like, how do I... Does. You don't yeah, know how to then, buy it. It's very easy. Oh, I know, but then it's like, how do I get that on Apple my TV? How do I get that on my TV? <laughs> buy it. Yeah, I don't think you can watch it on TV right, unless you have like an so. HDMI. TV no, what's the story part? you're going to tell? Take take his dick out of your mouth so you can tell a story. Yeah, story's over. <laughs> so he can finish beating off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, story's yeah. over. Story's <laughs> over. It wasn't even about Louis C.K. It was about David Lynch. The video of him where he's, like, have you ever seen the like videos of him directing? And he's, he's talking to these little kids and he's trying to get them to cry. And he's like, cry. Cry like a little baby. Cry. Really? It's so funny, dude. 
That seems manipulative. That's but that's what he does in Louis. He's like funny. Be funny. Funny <laughs> now. Three, two, one. Make me laugh. <laughs> that's funny. And he's like, you're a comedian. He's like, he's like, do you have any experience in being funny? He's like, yeah, like I'm a comedian. And he's like, I've known you for a week. You haven't made me laugh once. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck I'm seriously having a good time, guys. You are? <laughs> yeah. All right, fit, fit check. B- bless us with a fit check. Take hey, us as a toe. Here we start making your noise. Here we start making your noise. Roll around on the floor and make your noise. Here we go. Can you make your noise? Alden, if you could start crawling on the floor and making some noise, that would be so beautiful. <laughs> Cry for me. Crawl on the floor crying like a little baby. Can you do that, Alden? Cry out like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful. Cry, crawl over there and crawl around and cry like a baby. See, you're real loud. Wait, he's dead serious? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Can you cry like a baby for me? Cry. Him? Cry like a little baby. <laughs> They're giving fucking Oscars to these people? Yeah, bro. So that's, that's what directors are doing? I started crying like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just from hearing that. Dude, I read something, uh, I read something about... Sydney Sweeney, like uh, it was something that came up on my a thousand words Reddit or something, and it was like the the intimate scenes that they you do. Were on the Sydney Sweeney Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no, it actually didn't come up on Reddit. I just didn't. It came up on my Snapchat Explore page. I didn't want to say that because that sounds way worse. Yeah, but TikTok. I, I disagree with that. I think being on a Sydney Sweeney Reddit page is way worse than just being on Snapchat. Well, I wasn't on the Sydney Sweeney Reddit page. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just like I wasn't at a fucking. You were doing a fap club. tribute to Sydney. Tommy, you're a sick person. <laughs> right, so you were on the barely 19 4 chan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sydney Sweeney gone wild. And uh <laughs> and it was they were talking about how now in, in like for like sex scenes they have like a like a director of an intimacy coordinator. An, an intimacy coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> there was a what well, was like that every sh- movie set. They have an intimacy coordinator. What was the show uh, that was on? Used to be on HBO about a guy who like sold weed and he went around the city selling oh, weed. It was uh, a fucking awesome show. High maintenance. Yeah. There was one show that was like about the intimacy coordinator. Really? And like they had like prosthetics over like yeah. their dick, and they're yeah. like, "Okay, is this all right for you? Like, yeah. is this okay for you? Like the way that he's gyrating, is oh, that okay, dude? It's gonna it be a little so bit more of that." Reading that. I mean, it seems like it's way more clinical than just like, like uh, just making to be like, all right, now Halle Berry, fuck. like, all right, slap your yeah. fucking dicks together. Oh, dude, I walked by a when I was in San Francisco, I walked by a hotel room and there was people fucking in it, hard. Oh, I've never, yeah. this is never like, I I thought I heard it was right across from the elevator. It also it made me laugh because I was like, people definitely think they have way more privacy in hotels than they do. I've heard people like singing in their shower, and that's yeah. definitely even more embarrassing yeah. than dude. <laughs> this was like. Bah, it's not bah, you bah. You well to me. And then the girl doing like straight up like porno moans. So she's a prostitute. And I was just sitting at the elevator, just like tapping my foot, <laughs> waiting for it. Just you, listening to these people passionately fucking. Just tapping your boner. I asked if they needed an intimacy, intimacy <laughs> coordinator. coordinator. You guys need a hand? You just need me to coordinate in there? I got these wax ear candles. <laughs> <laughs> Get you guys right. Probably have a bunch of wax in there. What time of day was it? <laughs> uh, middle of the day. Interesting. It's probably like four or five p.m. or early, early to be fucking afternoon delight. Yeah, oh. I would have put a fucking cone up to the the door. <laughs> I stopped right in front of the door. The hell? And I went, oh, <laughs> harder. <laughs> it was Francis's room. <laughs> <laughs> I instantly texted Francis about it because I was hoping that he would come out and hear. I was cracking up. Like in Home Alone, when they hear the gunshots, everyone's like poking their head yeah. out into the hallway. <laughs> it was crazy. That's awesome. People having sex. That is awesome. I was. I thought that you meant that you were walking on the street and you saw into the window of a ground floor level oh, hotel no. room. That would be nuts. what the hell. That would be crazy. The Standard in New York. That's supposedly an exhibitionist hotel. Really? I stayed there Saturday night. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> I swear to God, I got locked out of my apartment. No, you didn't? Yes. You stayed at the Standard? That's a night. Are you a millionaire? No, I had to. It was three in the morning. I really? I got locked out, yeah, because our landlord tore our apartment Friday <laughs> and locked it from the inside. Yeah. It was a whole thing. But tell me more about the hotel. 
What? The, I mean, it, I, I think that it's just like people like fucking the windows. I think that they like uh, purposefully. I, I saw people fucking at the Moxie. Is that, is that, that's. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a coffee shop? No, the Moxie is a hotel. It is it? Well, it's definitely not roof. the standard. I didn't know if maybe they had two different names for a hotel. Like Double Tree Hilton. What do you do when you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, everyone knows that was a good analogy. <laughs> that was a good. That was very good. <laughs> really good. Wait, what, what happened, Ron? Did you? Did you? Uh, I've wait, never. No, wait, you never. You know, didn't see it. You I've never watched it. people. I, I just. It's. I think it's famous for it. I don't know, Mook, Mook, see if you can get to the bottom Checks of it. out. The rooms were kind of just like boxes. Boxes, and it's, it's like, like jammed up on a window. Yeah. Where is it? <laughs> just out of, just out of <laughs> curiosity. Is it, it's by like the line. Is it by the line or something like that? Yeah, or? It's known, it says, from its iconic windows. Known for its windows. Damn, I didn't get any pussy. Yeah? <laughs> Damn. I got to walk by Everyone there. was watching me like, look at this fucking virgin jerking <laughs> off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why they let you in late. They were hoping you'd go in there and fuck. Yeah, they probably let people check in whenever. Tommy, you saw someone fucking at the Moxie? Yeah, it was on my friend's roof in the East Village. There's a Moxie down there, and just right across the uh, street, you could just see these people going at it. Did you linger? Loiter? Oh, Definitely. We, all, we were all watching. I mean, we were, it was like a party on a roof. It was like free entertainment. Shit. We were like, look at these people. Fuck. That's terrible. Oh, I was so fucking bricked up. It's terrible? <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Why? Imagine fucking and rolling over and just seeing 70 dudes. I mean, they knew what Because I've been doing. to Tommy parties. It's all dudes. No, this... <laughs> <laughs> 70 dudes peering so over. There's probably, probably like nine yeah, dudes, four <laughs> girls. <laughs> yeah. It's dude heavy. You keep the girls quiet, too. I, kn I know how your parties are. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They ain't yapping. They there for show. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm fucking riffing. <laughs> He's fucking riffing. I'm obviously kidding. Oh, everybody's going to shoot me daggers because I do a little riffy riff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What kind of uh, what kind of positions were they were they hitting? All of them, all the good ones. That's fucking girl on top, girl on bottom. <laughs> <laughs> that is, those are the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> all righty, let's talk about game time. The exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports, created by fans for fans. Game time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price. And Tommy was just telling me about how he's going to go to some Mets games no, soon. He brother. wants to go to yep. Wait, you're disparaging the sponsor? I'm going to Yankee games, not Mets. You're gonna go to a Mets game. No, I'm not. I'm gonna go to a Yankee game, even though they're not playing very well right now. Game time makes it so easy and affordable and cheap to buy last minute tickets it says that Mets I'm gonna go in. Right anyway. here. I don't it says Mets on the copy. Well, they're wrong. I don't think that they're ever wrong because game time is what's right for me. And it doesn't matter where I am. You log on to game time. They'll give you the best tickets for the events that are going on right by you. The purchase process is easy. It's two taps, 10 seconds. And once you buy your tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. And there's no printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with your friends via text. So you can get into the game seamlessly. Skip the hassle and enjoy the moment. Download the Game Time app or go to the website, enter your email, and redeem code BOYDAD for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Go back to the show. <laughs> Damn, that's fucking sweet, man. I've never seen anything like that. No, neither. Really? Sick. Saw two tigers fuck at the San Diego Zoo once. That's probably why your family wants to get back on safari. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your dad's... Desperate for some fucking yeah, National Geographic him, yeah. fucking. He does watch a lot on Nat Geo. Damn, bro. Why don't you just come on? Uh, why don't we just schedule the safari at the same time? We probably get a good when ass group going? rate. I think this summer. Oh, you know really? When in the summer you're going? I don't know. You don't have anything booked yet? You, that's something you should book really pretty far out. Probably. Why? I don't know. Just feels like something you should book far out. <laughs> they're, bro, they're fucking having safaris all the time. It's a big yeah. part of the. Uh, There's a safari shortage. Yeah. The animals are this doing their shit. Poachers keep doing their thing. These I don't think people are poaching poachers. anymore. I think it's like uh, mercy killing. I think that they do people die on safaris. Yeah, is that right? All the time. Really? I almost did at, at the Disney World. Disney. <laughs> yeah, you got caught on that bridge. You got caught on the bridge and it fell. It collapsed. Yeah, that shit was almost deadly. There was news stories about that. I don't think that. I, I think that the animals think that like the. The whatever jeeps people are rolling around in are also animals. I don't think they're really? smart enough. That's pretty fucking stupid. These yeah, dumbass I've leopards. I've always wondered if like dogs know their dogs. They did. They have no idea. Yeah. Actually, maybe they do. They see another dog. They're fucking wagon tail. Yeah. Do you think they know that we're not dogs? I would think so. They know something's off. Yeah. 
Yeah, what the yeah. fuck are these guys doing? <laughs> they have a different respect for us. They don't get excited, at, or some dogs get excited when they see a human. Yeah, a lot of dogs get excited, when they but see they're not as excited as they get when they see a dog. Do they no. get excited or do they get angry? My dog gets angry when he sees dogs and humans. He's That's a, a nasty little boy. <laughs> it's a bad owner right there. <laughs> he was he just came fucked up, dude. There was no saving him. As a puppy, he was just yeah. a fucked up puppy. He's a fucked up puppy. He it's likes us. Dog? He likes our family. Oh no, big boy. I feel Big. like usually the smaller dogs are the nastier ones. Oh, he's a nasty dog. A mean bastard. Yeah, he bites. A big mean bastard. He's never bitten anyone in our family, but he's bitten... He bit the mailman. <laughs> he bit the UPS man. Or no, no, he bit the Amazon driver. That one, we were like, like that, one, that one we were like, we're going to have to... He's going to get... We're going to have to put him down because there's no way that the Amazon driver doesn't sue us. Amazon driver didn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> probably didn't know he could sue. Yeah, he was probably, probably like on drugs or something like yeah, that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's Most a great Amazon job to be on are. drugs, yeah. He's been, incredible job to be on she's drugs. He's bitten two of my friends, and he bit my cousin's boyfriend, and that was like the, that was the final straw. That was the one we were like, yeah, this is not good. Wait, how bad are these bites? What do you mean final straw? You didn't fucking get rid of the dog. All the other ones were like nips. But but how was it the final no, straw? he's not allowed to meet new people. Oh, God. <laughs> He's in solitary. solitary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he like he, he can hang out when he when we're at home. He's in the hole, just like singing comes, songs. Yeah, if anyone comes over, throwing a button a at the room. wall, trying to find it in the pitch yeah. black. I mean, he should be thankful. There's another option there, and it's <laughs> the not <other> pretty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> six feet under the hole. <laughs> it's not pretty, but uh, damn. Yeah, he bit my cousin's boyfriend bad, like like right in the calf, latched on, and then he comes back like wagging his tail because he's like I. So check out what I just did. I just did that. No big deal. Just defended the house. <laughs> you know what you got to do in situations like that when the dog latches on? Go limp. No, finger in the butt. Finger in the butt. Really? Yeah. yeah. Finger in the butt kind of just puts the dog your in. Your own him. butt? Or the- yeah, your butt. <laughs> 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 the dog's like, all right. Bro. This guy's a freak. <laughs> You're disgusting. <laughs> I want to put my mouth on this guy. Ew. <laughs> Ew. No. Oh, bro. <laughs> Wiping his tongue off. Like, yeah. what did I just bite? <laughs> this guy's a fucking pervert. Uh, That's disgusting. That's gross. Oh, It'll probably creep him out, though. Yeah. Like, acting crazy when you're getting robbed. Like, shit yourself once you're getting robbed. It's like the Jersey Shore when uh, Ronnie in the situation we're about to fight and the situation banged his head against a wall. <laughs> Come he did? on, everybody gets that it's reference. It's not as good as the Double Tree. <laughs> yeah. The double Tree was incredible. Yeah, swinging a miss. But I, have you ever seen Falco. the video, the like the viral video of the dude slamming his head on the on the side of the car, being like, "Let's fucking fight!" And then the dude just knocks him out immediately. He like concusses himself, and then the guy one punches him. Yeah, I guess that's the other way that that could go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just did half the fight to yourself. But yeah, far more likely. Dumbass. What would you do if a guy was about to beat you up? I would say, "Oh, this is it. Show's over." I'd say, "Please don't beat me up." That's probably like I I don't know voice. if I would ever get in a fight. I think I'm pretty. Oh, I'm not talking about a fight. I'm talking about a guy being like, I'm going to kick your ass. When would that yeah. happen? I don't know. I've made it I've through this many bars. years of life and nothing has... You've never gotten beat up? Not like beat up. You've never had someone be like, I'm going to beat your ass? I think I've been with you and people have been like, I'm going to beat your ass. Did they do it? No. Right. <laughs> tell tell me more about that. <laughs> when were people going to beat Ron's oh. ass? I've, got, I've had people at bars be like, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. They'd Just, be like, oh, yeah. then do it. <laughs> And then I throw up. No, I uh, <laughs> as a defense mechanism. In like bathrooms at bars, like a skunk I, spraying. I feel like if you go to like a packed bar, ninety percent of the time you go into the bathroom, someone in there is going to threaten you. Oh yeah, they're angry in there. Yeah, because they're all just doing a shit ton of coke and being like, "I'm the coolest fucking person in the world. Let's fight." Somewhere. That's why you always splay your stance, keep arm lit, arm distance. Yeah. I uh, me and my friends were at a bar one time in Delaware. It was really a, a crowded uh, bathroom line, and I can't perform in front of people. Uh, yeah, that I can't, happened to me too. Yeah, I can't pee in like a urinal, and it just is nonstop. So we took over the bathroom and we like closed the door so that I could pee, and people were not happy. But we took it over like we were the fucking Taliban, <laughs> and then they like charged in and they were like, "You guys can't fucking do that." I was like, "I had to pee. I had to pee in privacy." Did they almost whip your ass? No, no, no. They're like, "Tommy smokes." <laughs> <laughs> I you had to pee wherever you want, bro. When I was in college, I went to a bar and I had a dude. I was at, it was like a packed bar, and I went to the bathroom to take a piss. Same thing, can't perform in front of people. I need to go into the stall. I'm waiting. There's a guy behind me, and the urinal opens up, and I'm like, "Oh, you can go to the urinal. I got to go to the stall." That's always a tough explanation. And he was to like, give. "Why?" 
And I was like, oh, shy bladder. And he goes, he goes, prove it. <laughs> I was like, what the hell does that mean? How do I prove it? Just stand in front of the urinal and, and not, not pee? pee. <laughs> yeah. My friend Mike, had, had uh, he was walking through a festival, and these dudes were like, show us your dick if you're not a cop. Right away, he pulled his dick out. Which and the rest of the dick? people did it. And they're like, kind of weird that you're rolling with all those cops. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which Mike? Do I know him? Uh, I think you met him once. Best Mike? No, different Mike. What do you mean, best Mike? Best man Mike? No, different Mike. Oh. I don't Wait, wanna, is best I don't, man Mike not Wallow? No, no. it's a different Mike. Jeez. Best, my, my, Wallace says it, that's a guy who's gotten in some fights. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's not surprising at all. <laughs> that's a guy who's like thrown out more than five headbutts in his life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the guy telling us ass to prove he can't be. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he just goes places looking to fuck with people. Yeah. With the whole Seth thing. Yeah, I mean, I, well, that's a, like a happy fuck with. Yeah, but it's still fucking with people, and some people just don't want to get fucked with. Yeah, I'm so, I wouldn't be surprised if Seth's been in some fights himself. <laughs> Has he? I doubt it. I think Seth is like such good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa, dude, what do you mean you're gonna fight me? <laughs> but in like college, I think I saw him like, like there's still a blood splatter on the wall if you go back to our college house, like a Jackson Pollock painting of when he headbutted someone at the top of a staircase. That's crazy, dude. You gotta be a maniac to be throwing headbutts out. And like more than one headbutts. Throwing a headbutt out, that means that you, like, you don't give a fuck what happens to your head. Yeah. I have a headbutt, boy. Rock, rock of a head. So Damn. they just don't feel it. Huh. <laughs> I don't think I would ever headbutt. No. God, no. What the <laughs> fuck? Yeah. That might be the, the activity I'd be least to do in my entire life is throw somebody a headbutt. Yeah. It would hurt so much. Yeah, I think I've passed the point where I'd ever get in a fight. I wish I did get in a fight at some point in my life. Though, I so could I see someone being like, it. oh, little Sasquatch, little funny man, I'm going to kick your ass. And then I'd be like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a very confrontational person. No, me neither. I tried to fight one of my best friends when we were in ninth grade. And then I started crying. Because <laughs> <laughs> you love you too me much, off. brother. What about video games? Pro- probably had something to do with video games, honestly. You spazzed? Yeah. You fucking threw the controller down? Rage no, quit? It wouldn't have been that. I definitely had moments where I rage quit and turned my PlayStation off because he was pissing me off. Yeah, but no, never any. I feel like I've been in like small fights, but like not. Or, or like also like rumbles, but I've never got this shit beat out of me. Yeah. I've been punched in the, in the face and head. Why? Why? What happened? What'd you do? It, no, it was like a bit part of like a big fight, like big fights. Oh yeah, brawls. Yeah, in college, you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> the fuck away from him! <laughs> Get off him! <laughs> <laughs> shit does not hurt that bad though. I promise you. Like, yeah, because you're probably shit faced. Yeah. Like this is sick. Look. Take a picture of your, yeah. like, fat lip. It's fucking sick. I'm definitely not past the point of getting jumped. That's still a real possibility. Oh, yeah, that's kind of what that I probably will. It's probably, like, concern. inevitable that that will happen. You gotta be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> be dangerous. Fight back. Have you ever seen the fucking Jordan Peterson clips where he's like, if you're not dangerous... <laughs> What, what does he say? He's like, if you're not dangerous, then your peace means nothing. Being peaceful means nothing if you're not restraining yourself. It's a preposterous thing to think. No, I haven't seen that. you got to be dangerous. Are you, you fuck with Peterson? I know you don't watch any Peterson. You've never even heard of Peterson. JP? Yeah. Jordan Peterson? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I know he does, you know, talks and stuff. People seem but. to like him, though. He's not really, like, quite Andrew Tate. He's, like, a little less, right? He's like old More Canadian Andrew Tate yeah. wear suits and shit like that. He's not like a... I think some people hate him, but like, you know what I mean? Not as much as other people, though. Yeah, Andrew Tate's like a fucking sex trafficker. Yeah. Him and Louis C.K. were probably in fucking cahoots <laughs> yeah, with each on, other. I say that. <laughs> like, what yeah. if Louis C.K. fucking meets me one time? Dude, I saw... <laughs> He'll someone, be mad that I made a joke about him. Someone saw. Someone sent me a tweet the other day of uh, like a Andrew Tate fan account being like, you're dating a 12 out of 10. She's rich as fuck. She does everything you want for her, for you, but she doesn't like Andrew Tate. <laughs> what do you do? And all the comments are like, like most of them would be like, 
dump her. It's not worth it. She like that. And then like one, then like every now and then there'd be one be like, grow with her. Teach her to learn. <laughs> teach her to learn how to like date. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone will be like, this is the answer that we were looking for. This is the way. Yeah. She will learn. This is a man. She does all the things that Andrew Tate tells a woman that she has to do. Yeah. She'll figure it out herself. If she's really a 12 out of 10. What do you think his demographic is? Do you, I think it's year old boys. No, I think no, no. It's it's like, how, I think it's closer to 10, 10 year old boys. Yeah. Really? I think it's like 13. 12. And then I think there's a lot of like jacked Indian dudes who are like <laughs> super into Andrew Tate. <laughs> I swear to God. I think that's like 50% of his demographic. There's a lot of jacked Indian dudes. That's the point, bro. Oh, okay. And they're like, I thought I was going to get pussy. They're like, I, everyone told me if I worked out, I would get pussy. And now they can't get what pussy. What is this? Yeah, and they're still not getting pussy. Look at my dick, it's dry. Yeah. And Explain now they're this. like, well, now I hate women. <laughs> no, seriously, dude. Every time I, every time like an Andrew Tate post comes up on my Instagram, like a, one of those fan accounts, all the comments are jacked Indian dudes. Who are like stiff leg, backhand slapping yeah. people. Yeah. Classic J.I.D. Jack yeah, J.I.D. is a good-ass rapper, bro. Don't fucking put schmutt on J.I.D.'s name. Never heard of him. Can't be that good. <laughs> Cancel him. Cancel good. Tommy. You don't know Jid, bro? Who is that? Sneaky oh, goat. Hey, bro. I'm fucking with you guys. I'm fucking with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. I know, okay. <laughs> That's good. That's, That's fucking That's that type good, of riffing bro. I bring to the pod. I know. You're crazy, bro. I think you'd like him. I do. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to think. I do. I know him, and I like his music, and I know multiple of his songs. Top three bars? Uh, Red Lion, <laughs> <laughs> Gem Saloon, Factory. Okay, they're both on their phone, so I guess I'll start entertaining everybody. My boy, my boy Wix said just sent me a beat just now. to it bro I want to hear what he I want to hear what the fuck he's talking about he definitely fucking spazzed on this bro mm. this shit sounds hard bro hard as fuck we spazzed on this one this shit could be a hit. Oh, fuck. Tommy, you 16? <laughs> Tommy, feel free to hop in yeah, whenever. 16. 16? 16 bars, bro. Bro. Yeah. He doesn't know Jim. <laughs> you can count bars, right? Obviously. <laughs> Three, so, four, uh, if five, you ever notice, like, Drake kind of wraps off beat. <laughs> Did you think so? No, it's a thing. So, like, a lot of go, dun, 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 dun. And Drake kind of wraps off the beat. Like I saw, t- I saw a TikTok about this. I saw that same TikTok. Very and, interesting. And uh, I was not able to tell if it was accurate or not, but the man spoke with confidence. Yeah, fuck, fuck those people. Whoa. And, and, <laughs> and fuck you too, Tommy. Fuck All those right, people. And anybody up? who's not a jacked Indian dude, I'm not fucking with. Exactly. Me Stop. neither. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Let's end the show. Yeah. Why don't we end the show right now? Let's end this. We'll see you guys. Yeah. Sass is in Iceland Jesus. right now, so no, I'll be back. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on, Tommy. No, you're welcome. All right, thank you guys. See All you next right. week. Thanks for coming on, Tommy. All righty, guys. Uh, is that time of year again? Big week. Rough and rowdy yep. is coming up. Big time. Rough and Rowdy 21 invades West Virginia this Friday night, May 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Dave, Big Cat, and Robbie Fox are all on the call for R&R 21, Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Witness every second of the action by ordering now on buyrnr.com. That is buyrnr.com. I wonder who else. Mr. Ferone, why don't you talk to me a little bit about R&R? Are you going to be out there, brother? Yeah, I wonder who else is going to be on there. That's funny that they gave us ad copy that per purposefully excluded me from Rough and Rowdy. No, like, crazy. I'm not going to be in there giving you ringside like interviews. in the mix. Like, there's not going to be knockouts. Like, like there's there not going to be, be knockouts. a ring girl competition. Like, there ain't going to be ring girl Frank the Tank's not going to be out there fucking shaking ass. Like, Big Cat's not going to sing the national anthem. Not Like, they're not going to have the perfect call. Like, every single Rough and Rowdy, one of the best sporting events. If you can't be there live, you better go to buyrnr.com. It's worth it. It's, it's worth really it. You're going to love yeah. it. Lock the heck in. 
Lock the heck in and buy just R&R. get yourself over to buy R and R dot R and R twenty one legal. Legal. All right, back to the show. That last part. Yeah, that was weird. Back to the show though. 